When it comes to storage, SD cards aren't particularly eye-catching, but I think maybe we pay less attention to them than we really should. For instance, handheld PCs. Pretty much all of them only have room for a single SSD, which leaves SD cards as the only secondary storage option. Lots of uh, smaller laptops also have this limitation. They only have one SSD slot, but they will usually have at least one micro SD slot. So that being said, let me introduce you to one of PMY's largest microSD cards, the Pro Elite Prime 1.5 terabyte, which PMY sent in for a review. This drive is rated for 200 megabytes in reads and 150 megabytes in writes, which is not really that fast and like, you know, compared to like an SSD, but it's relatively fast for a microSD card. And uh, also consider this, this thing is like the size of a fingernail. You know, I'm not, I'm not joking when I say it is the size of a fingernail. Even my pinky fingernail is uh, fairly comparable to this thing. As I record this video, PNY's top end SD card is going for about $110. Now, SD cards tend to not be very cheap per the gigabyte compared to SSDs and hard drives, but small stuff always comes at a premium. Though interestingly, there seems to be only one other 1.5 terabyte micro SD card out there. Uh, it's made by SanDisk and it only goes up to 150 megabytes per second. Uh, if SanDisk doesn't say whether it's in reads or writes, presumably that re means reads and that probably implies that the writing performance is even lower. So PMY kind of has the market cornered specifically for 1.5 terabyte micro SD cards. Compared to one terabyte and two terabyte cards, the Pro Elite Prime 1.5 terabyte is priced pretty decently, especially since lots of one terabyte cards are going for about $100, sometimes even exactly $100 or even a little bit more. Uh, paying just a little bit extra for 50% more storage is a pretty good deal. Personally, I don't really use SD cards all that much. What I use for external storage is uh, a SATA SSD like this 2.5 inch, regular, classic, and then I connect it to uh, this SATA to USB cable by Sabrent. It means I can use all my old SSDs. Even old SATA SSDs boast much faster reading and writing performance than the latest SD cards and are also much cheaper per gigabyte. And it also gives me a reason to keep my old SSDs around instead of like throwing them away or something, which would be pretty wasteful. So for this review, I'll be comparing PMY's flagship SD card to its own CS900 500 gigabyte SSD, as well as Crucial's BX500 one terabyte. I also have an Amazon Basics 256 gigabyte SD card lying around, so I tested that as well. All drives were plugged into our LGA 1700 test bench with the Core i9 1400K via the USB 3.2 ports, which offer more than enough bandwidth to get the most out of these storage devices. The SSDs were connected to the test bench via that Sabrent USB to SATA cable I mentioned earlier, while the micro SD cards were plugged into PMY's performance Prime USB card reader. These drives basically have all the advantages possible. I ran our normal SSD benchmarks for this review, with the exception of Iometer, which I normally use to show cache durability and performance in sustained writing operations. However, these drives don't really have caches to speak of, and the normal writing speed is pretty slow anyways, so I'm skipping it this time. I don't think anyone will care too much, but if you do, I am very sorry. Anyways, let's get to the performance results. First up, we have 3 d Mark storage benchmark. This test basically runs a little bit of everything game related on our drives. This benchmark is also great for a look at overall storage performance that's relevant to most people, even if the workloads include things like saving and loading game saves. While the Pro Elite Prime is significantly better than the Amazon Basics card, it's well behind the BX500 and the CS900. All of these scores, however, are pretty low in the grand scheme of things. I don't think any NVMe SSD today would get a score less than like a thousand points. Next up, we have Crystal Disk Mark, an SSD benchmark which tests transfer speeds when working with data under specific conditions. The main parameters we're looking at here are sequential versus random data and higher Q depth versus lower ones. First, we're looking at the sequential 8Q depth test, which tends to produce high transfer speeds. The Pro Elite Prime is about twice as fast as the basics drive here, but the CS900 and the BX500 are even faster than that. Well, the BX500 is faster in reads, but not so much in writes. This crucial drive is insanely slow in writes because I guess they didn't set up any decent caching mechanism at all, so even the Pro Elite Prime is much faster than the SATA drive. In small bursts, the BX500 is capable of like 200-ish eh, megabytes per second in writes, but uh, yeah, that only lasts for like 10 seconds. It, it's it's quite poor in a uh, sustained writing operation. It's good to know that the PMY SD card can hit some pretty decent writing speeds without dipping down super low, uh, at least at low capacity usage. 
It's more of the same when we reduce the queue depth to one, which would normally reduce performance on our drives. However, these SSDs and SD cards aren't nearly fast enough to take advantage of a queue depth of eight when doing sequential work, so going down to one doesn't really change anything. In the random test with a queue depth of 32, the SSDs do pretty well and the SD cards do pretty poorly. Being able to have a full size controller really pays off in random workloads, which come into play mainly with games if we're just talking secondary storage. Random performance is pretty important for an OS drive as well, but Obviously, you're almost certainly not installing an operating system on a micro SD card. The SSDs see much worse performance with a Q depth of one, but they're still about three times faster than our SD cards. We use Diskbench to transfer a copy of the Witcher 3 game files from one place on our drives to another, which means our drives are reading and writing at the same time. The Pro Elite Prime is actually in second place here, mainly thanks to the BX500 being really awful at writing. The CS900, however, was nearly twice as fast. Granted, 40 and 80 megabytes are both pretty slow, but you're not getting anything much faster without spending lots more. Our last test is Final Fantasy XIV's official Dawn Trail benchmark, which tracks loading times. Somehow, the Pro Elite Prime was the slowest of the bunch by quite a big margin, even the Amazon Basics SD card was faster, I'm not sure how that happened. But in fairness to the PNY card, this is the combined time across 5 loading screens, so the wait time per screen is closer to 10 seconds rather than 40, which is slow but still tolerable. Obviously, the Pro Elite Prime wasn't really able to beat either of our SSDs. It did show much better writing performance than the BX500, but that's mostly because the BX500 has uniquely bad writing speed. PNY's own CS900 was about twice as fast as the SD card. I was particularly disappointed with the performance in Final Fantasy XIV since loading times are pretty important for gaming. On the other hand, the Pro Elite Prime did destroy the Amazon Basics card. Now, that's not a particularly high bar to clear, but it does show that getting a higher end SD card can actually matter. But there's more to this comparison than just performance. For pretty much any portable device, portability is important too. And you can tell pretty much immediately just by looking at these two devices that one of them is much more convenient to carry around than the other. And listen, as someone who has been using this sort of storage solution for a number of years now, I can tell you this one, the micro SD card obviously, is a lot more convenient and a lot more portable. Personally, I expect I'll be using the Pro Elite Prime more often than my SATA SSDs because PMY doesn't want the SD card back. It's not going to radically change my workflow, but it will make things a little bit less cumbersome. Also, lots of devices use SD cards, micro or full size, as their secondary storage. Off the top of my head, I can think of the Steam Deck, the Nintendo Switch, and my own Flow X13 laptop. Now, I think most people will have a hard time finding a use for an extra 1.5 terabyte drive on one of these devices, but admittedly, adding a micro SD card is much much simpler than swapping out the SSD. I've done it before on my deck and my Flow X13, and it is not very fun at all. Overall, we give PMY's Pro Elite Prime SD card a thumbs up. If your main concern is convenience and portability and you need over a terabyte of storage, then this SD card should do the job. If you liked our testing and analysis, then please like the video, leave a comment, subscribe, and click the bell icon to get notified the next time we upload. If you really like what we do, please consider supporting us through Patreon. A link is in the description. Anyways, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.